guys, it's Jennifer and welcome back to Little Green Farmhouse. I'm here today to talk about how to make um, either a honeysuckle jelly or a clover blossom jelly. Now, my yard is filled with clover. <laughs> it's supposed to be grass, but there's a lot of clover that grows. And so there are lots of blossoms. You can just, so I first made um, jelly with clover blossoms, but you can use the exact same recipe with honeysuckle blossoms. And I don't have a honeysuckle plant in my yard, but my neighbor has a few. And so I asked her if I could um, just take some of the blossoms and try this out. And she said, of course, and so I did. So anyway, the, the video I'm gonna show you is actually me making the honeysuckle jelly. But like I said, the process is exactly the same for clover blossom jelly. And, um, and it's, it's so good, you guys. It comes out tasting like honey, both of them do. Clover blossom and honeysuckle in slightly different ways. But anyway, so really super yummy. So let me go ahead and show you the process for doing this. So I collected several cups of honeysuckle blossoms. And the next step is that I'm just gonna put them in water. Of course, look for the link below this video that will take you over to the coordinating blog post where I'll have the exact recipe. But I'm gonna put it in boiling water and then turn the water off, you know, stir these in, and then put a lid on it, and let it sit until it comes to room temperature. Um, it will be at least 45 minutes, more than likely longer, and it'll just let all the goodness go out into the water, and then you end up with this honeysuckle blossom tea that is then used in the jelly. Just to show you, this ended up being, you know, a good four cups of, blossoms. I didn't think it was going to be that many, but it, um, but it was. Yay. So here I've dumped the blossoms in. I'm just going to give it a good stir to make sure that all the blossoms are submerged. And so now they are. Oops, you can see my camera's getting steamed up. The next step is to put a cover on this and turn the burner off and then just let it sit and do its little steeping thing until it um, cools down. So I've added a quarter cup of, of lemon juice and four cups of sugar and now the next thing I'm going to do is let this heat up until it comes to 120 degrees. So I'm going to put a candy thermometer in there to measure that out and when it comes to 120 degrees then it will be ready to ladle up and put into sterilized jars because i'm going to put this through a water bath canning method so that it doesn't have to stay refrigerated so i'm going to take my jars wash them really well and then i'm going to put them in boiling water to sterilize them and then take them through the canning process so what i'm going to do next is uh, Make sure that this comes to a temperature of 220 degrees. I have my candy thermometer here to measure that. When it does, I'm going to add one packet of liquid pectin <clears throat> and then boil for two more minutes and then shut it off. The liquid pectin will help to thicken up the jelly and then it will be ready to ladle into sterilized jars. So now I'm using a pressure canner as a water bath canner. And you'll just have to follow instructions for your canner to see how to do that. Mine is really just involved creating a couple of vent holes. And so I removed a couple of pieces according to the instructions. So steam can come out and then you hook the lid on just as you normally would. And then this, you can just use a regular water bath canner too. I just don't have both. Um, so anyway, this needs to process according to the directions I'm following for 10 minutes. You always need to make sure that you follow the instructions in the book that comes with your canner or a good canning um, recipe book. Also, if you're doing pressure canning of any kind, so that would be things that are not acidic, like if you're gonna do, if you're gonna can beans or meat or anything like that, then you really have to get technical. You need to use a pressure canner for sure and you need to adjust the pressure and the minutes that you process um, based on the elevation where you live even. So you have to be really careful with that. So, but, but for jelly, it doesn't have to process quite so long. 
uh, you do actually, you can make adjustments for elevation because water boils at a lower temperature at higher elevations. So, um, you know, you may be thinking, wow, I've got a rolling boil here, but the temperature is not nearly as hot as it would be in a b pot of boiling water at um, sea level. So just make sure you check your instructions so that you're safe rather than sorry. Now, if you had never made jelly before, don't use that as an excuse and say, oh, I could never do that. That was my first time. Actually, it wasn't my first time. I made clover blossom jelly first, and then I made honeysuckle. So that was my second time on this video. So it's really not very difficult, and I would encourage you to give it a try, especially if you have access to clover blossoms or honeysuckle blossoms. And just a great way of taking the, the flavors of summer and preserving them for later on in the year. So if you give this a try, write a comment in the space below and let me know how it went. And I hope you will follow along on Little Green Farmhouse. If you're not a current subscriber, this is a channel about everything home related. Gardening, cooking, crafting, cleaning, and organizing. And I hope you'll come along. Hit that button right there to subscribe and YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos, which is several times a week. Take care, you guys. Bye-bye.